Hello everyone, today let's talk about finding the length of this parametrized curve. Generally, finding the length of a parametrized curve is easy because uh, there is a formula, so the setup is not going to be difficult. Usually the difficult part is coming from the integration, and it's it depends on the kind of curve that you're getting. Sometimes you're really getting a nice curve so that the integration will still be easy. Uh, most of the time you are going to run into um, an expression that you need to manipulate so that you can get rid of the square root. It's really because of the square root that will just make things more difficult. Okay, so let's get started. First, uh, we need to find r prime. And you can also think of that as the velocity function for the motion of the object moving along this curve. Okay, so we take the derivative of each of the components and that will be quite easy because um, we have nice functions over here. So taking the derivative of e to the t, we still just get e to the t. And then taking the derivative of square root of two times t, see that the square root of two is just a constant of the t, right, in front of the t. So we are going to take the derivative of the t, which becomes one. So we are going to get square root of two. And then this one, we are going to get e to the negative t, and then due to the chain rule, we need to multiply by the derivative of the exponent, which will be negative one. And so that is our velocity function. And our next step is to find the speed function. The speed function is actually finding the magnitude of the velocity function. Okay, so we find the magnitude. The magnitude is found by taking the square root, and then inside the square root, we, have squ we are going to square each of the coordinates for the vector and then we add them together. So we are going to get e to the t and then square and then plus square root of 2 and then square and then plus negative e to the negative t and then square. And then we have the... And then now let's just try to square this and see what happens. So we have um, e to the t squared, and then you can just multiply the 2 and the t together. So we are going to get what? e to the 2t, okay? And then square root of 2 and then squared, so we just get 2. And then plus, and then what about the next one? The next one is that uh, we have negative t times 2, so we get negative 2t. So, uh, and then you may say, what about this negative sign here? Because we're squaring it, so it's going to disappear. So we are going to get e to the negative 2t. Okay, so we have this expression, and let's just recall the length for a parametrized curve is going to be given by, so it's the integral from a to b, and then we have the integrand as the magnitude of the velocity function. Okay, and so that means this is our integrand. This is our integrand here. So it goes, it goes right here. Now the problem is that we need to deal with the square root and then you may say, what should we do, right? It looks like it's complicated. Um, it's actually not too complicated uh, if we recognize there is something special about this expression is that let's just recall something here also. Let's just recall another formula over here. What happens is that we are going to have, let's say if we are going to write down a plus b, okay, and then quantity square, and then that would be equal to what? That would be equal to a square plus 2 times a b, okay, and then plus b square. And then you may say, why do I write down this formula? It's really because this one looks like this. And then you may say, how, how does that look like that one, right? So let's actually just try it and then you will see why. Okay, so what really happens is that if we are um, treating this one as a square and then this one as b square okay and so then you may say what is a what is b now if you just look at that a actually because there is a square over here right so if if we just want to write down what a is it's actually our e to the t so we just get e to the t and then what about the b the b is the same idea over here there is a square on the outside and then you, you get e to the negative t and then you may say what about this negative sign here it's up to you um, what to do but we don't have to include that right so we can just say b is equal to e to the negative t over here okay so now what happens is that we plug the a, b into this formula, and then it's going to look like this, e to the t plus e to the negative t, okay? 
and then we are going to get a square, which is that, right? Because we we claim that this is a square, so that will be the same thing. And then now this one, we use the a b that we figure out. So we have two times the what the e to the t, and then e to the leg of the t, and then plus b square. B square is um, this thing. So we get e to the leg of the two t. Now, e to the t times e to the negative t, they cancel each other out because this is actually just 1 over e to the t. So 1 over e to the t times e to the t, they cancel each other out. So we can cancel them, okay? And then what happens is that if we cancel, then we are left with a 2. Do you see that this expression right here on the right side of this equation is the, exactly the same? And so if this expression is exactly the same as that one. That means we can actually rewrite this expression into this form. Okay, so what really happens is that we just continue writing the, uh, the velocity function is that we are going to, instead of writing this, we have the square root, we still have the square root on the outside, and then we just have this expression. So we are going to get e to the t plus e to the negative t, and then quantity squared. Okay, now you can see that there was a square here, there was a square root, so they cancel each other out, and then we are going to get the absolute value of e to the t plus e to the negative t. But now e to the t and e to the negative t are both positive, so if you are adding them together, then we are still going to get the positive number, so we don't need the absolute value, so we are just getting e to the t plus e to the negative t. Okay? And so our integrand is actually quite simple to integrate. So now we are going to actually stop writing down <clears throat> um, the integral for the length. And then the integral for the length, we go back to the original problem. You can see that we are going from 0 to 2 for the t, right? So we are going to write them down as the limit. So we have 0 to 2. And then our integrand becomes this one, e to the t plus e to the leg of the t. And then dt. OK, um, this one is easy to integrate. So we are just going to do the calculation right now nt derivative e to the t is just e to the t, nt derivative e to the negative t is negative e to the negative t, okay? And then we are evaluating this from 0 to 2, so we are going to get what? Well, let's see, so we are going to plug in the 2, so we have e to the 2, e to the second power, and then minus e to the negative uh, 2, and then minus e to the 0, then minus e to the negative 0. And do you see what's going on here? This is 1, and that is also 1. 1 minus 1 is 0, so this thing becomes 0. So now we are left with just this. So we have e to the second minus e to the negative second power. And so that is the length of this curve. Okay, so the trick here is that oftentimes we are going to get a uh, perfect square here. And then that means that will cancel out with the square root, and then we will be able to do the integration. It's really because um, the, curve is, the curve is given to us that way. And then, of course, there is no guarantee that you will always get a perfect square. And in that case, you still have to do the integration with, by dealing with the square root. Uh, there, it can happen that there will be a use up, or you gotta do a trick up, or sometimes you simply just cannot find an elementary antiderivative for that function. In that case, then you can use the uh, numerical methods to find the value for, to approximate the value for the integral. Okay, so that's it for this problem. Um, I will see you next time.